ಮಂಗಳಂ ಕೌಸಲೇಂದ್ರಾಯ ಮಹನೀಯ ಗುಣಾತ್ಮನೆ ಚಕ್ರವರ್ತಿ ತನುಜಾಯ ಸಾರ್ವಭೌಮಾಯ ಮಂಗಳ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂಯಿಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ಅವರ್ ಸ್ಟಡಿ ಆಫ್ ದ ರಾಮಾಯಣ there are many great characters in this great epic one of the great characters one characters that we come across in this epic is tara <coughs> how did she react to her husband wali's death you know tara is one of the pancha mahapati vratas mahapati vrata means a woman who has serving her husband as the sole wo in life jivan vrata only one vrata one wo what is that to serve her husband as a sole wo so that is pati vrata so she is one of the five great prati vratas who are the other four sita mandodari ahalya and draupadi so how did she respond how did she react to wali's death it will be interesting for us why because today's topic is tara a soul cleaved in two post wali's death her pain it would be very difficult for us to assess she wept and wept and wept that is written there in the ramayana how much of pain she must have felt definitely she must have felt as if her heart was cleaved in two that much she wept so many people tried to console her only at last when rama said her that everything happens by the will of the creator ke okay, sukha and dukha comes to come to creatures only according to the law written by vidhatha we are all just helpless in front of that mighty law basically it's law of karma so we have to resign to our fate and accept whatever that comes in our life she got consoled at last so when rama killed wali all the monkeys ran helter skelter in fear because their leader was killed so they all went and broke this news for tara in kishkinda and told her try to defend the city make arrangements for that wali has been killed by that great rama install angada as the king of the kishkinda and so they were telling all this to her and trying to infuse fear in her heart as well because wali was a mighty hero he had been slain now so they created that fear in thara they tried to create and dismissing all of them because thara was interested only to come and see wali and his condition there in the battlefield and so dismissing all of them actually she rushes to the place where the conflict happened and there she saw thara saw wali lying on the earth in a pool of blood clasping wali to her bosom and wailing piteously for the sake of angada the first pain the husband is still going away who will take care of angada now beloved son the son will become fatherless so what she is feeling more actually the distress is more not because of any other reason one thing is now he she is saying that you know you know emotions play out when somebody passes away somebody very close to dies so remember all their acts and now who will take care of this person who will take care of that person that now have become an orphan okay the kind of we all know actually when somebody passes away who is very close to how the emotions play out how we weep what kind of language comes out just like that she was weeping actually so tara is telling actually how he fell how actually looked like that great wali there lying on the bare earth he looked like an uprooted tree like a mountain cliff that had been you know struck by an arrow like an elephant that was struck by an arrow you know and it collapses right 
like that because he was a great hero a mighty hero of you know of mighty strength so that's how actually the body of the wali appeared to tara that's how actually sage valmiki describes wali the scene actually shrimad ramayana and now she is telling him you get up and look at me look at me so kim idhanim purobhagam adhya tam na abhivashyase i am just in front of you why don't you speak to me now actually he is about to die he just actually little prana is left in wali how he would be able to speak at that point of time but she was weeping and wailing weeping and wailing and saying that i am just in front of you speak to me so now she is telling that you are a great hero a mighty hero uttishth harishar tula vajasva shenottamam how come that a hero like you you know falls on the ground and actually sleeps on the ground uttishth harishar tula or get up a mighty vanara or get up a mighty monkey and you have to lie down on cot not here nirananda nirashaham nimagna shoka sagare now you have gone so i am very of any joy now nirananda there will not be any joy in my life nirasha and i my life will become hopeless nimagna shoka sagare i am actually drowned actually in the ocean of sea now so this is my fate so she is sitting now because it's pativratha and everybody actually whoever is pativrata she feels when pati is dead means they are also as good as dead that much of grief she was experiencing how come actually my heart is not broken into 1000 pieces sputate adya sahasradha you should have been broken into 1000 pieces by now if i had real love for you it has not been broken means my love actually is not real for you so that's how actually in mahabharata also when you see that nala damayanti also says the same thing and she was separated from nala without informing her nala goes away and next i mean after her sleep when she wakes up she doesn't find nala and then she weeps actually so how come that like i'm still alive even after i'm separated from you unala you know that can be that kind of pure love then exists between two individuals when one individual is separated another individual collapses it should have happened to me but it's not happening means my heart is so strong actually it's made of kind of stone or kind of steel actually she is telling tara is telling so all this i have told you this is all the fruit of your action i have told you actually not to antagonize griva i have told you actually not to keep his wife ruma but you didn't listen to me so all this is because you have exiled griva you have kept his wife you have arrested his wife you have actually reaped the fruit of your own action when i gave you the wise counsel you ignored my wise counsel and you reproached me you have scolded me saying that i am ignorant and i don't know so my wise counsel fell on deaf ears and so you didn't pay heed to my good advice and now actually you brought this state upon yourself now you are going to heaven we will miss us miss you here you go to heaven actually and there you will churn the minds of heavenly damsels minds of apsaras you know heaven means swarga swarga apsaras will be there and with your great form with your extraordinary form and calmly form actually you will churn the minds of actually those apsaras this is all you know emotion just playing out for all that so my husband passed away so she is actually remembering the great uh, days that she had spent with her husband and she says now kalo nisamshyo nunam jeevitantakarasthava who brought this death upon you kala the mighty time nobody can resist it time actually according to a karabdha so whatever the experience that we have to experience that will come to us at the right time only time will put an end to your life and so it has brought you under the sway of sugriva now now death comes in some form it has to come now actually death has come today to you in the form of sugriva death actually has taken sugriva as an agent and brought this condition upon yourself rama must should but surely feel sorry for what he has done tara except once only once she indicted rama because she knew that actually wali had reaped the fruit of his own action his own sinful action so even in that distress actually though rama was standing by the side of the dead body of wali she did not indict him she did not indict sugriva also except say mildly only once she said because wali had indicted rama but tara she was trying to bear the grief actually 
So all the emotions were playing out. Though actually Sugriva and Rama were by the side of the dead body of Bali, she didn't indict them except once. She only said that you didn't fight with Rama. You were only fighting with Sugriva, but Rama had killed you. Surely he must have felt unhappy with his own act. This is the only thing. This is the only indictment that she had made against Rama and nothing else. Now actually this widowhood has come upon me, which is very painful. For a woman, actually pious woman, to live in this world without her husband would be so excruciatingly painful. So this widowhood has come to me so early in life, it's extremely painful for me. What will happen to this boy Angada? Who will look after him? Who will take care of him? He is a small boy. Now actually she is turning towards Sugriva, Angada and Shelling. Now actually see that actually look at your father's face. You will not get to see your father's face again. Yes, he is going to the next world for my child. So this is the last time, the last look that you can have. So you just try to look at your father. And then now she turned to Wali. And who says, give your parting message to your son, your beloved son Mangada. You are going away to the next world. So you give your parting message to your son. So he, she asked actually Angada, you asked some message from your father actually, you will not get to see him afterwards again. And now again she turns to Sugriva and says him, now your hostile brother has been killed. You will get your wife back and also your kingdom back. So you can rule the kingdom happily, O Sugriva, she is telling. So other monkeys are also weeping around, you know, the Wali actually who was lying in a pool of blood. So and then she is telling, if anything repugnant to you has been done by me inadvertently, please forgive that excess or offense of me. You know, generally, as long as the people are alive and people are by our side, we don't really remember their good qualities. When somebody passes away, only good qualities actually we remember. If every one of us actually during lifetime, if we become aware of the good qualities of the people with whom we are, or people who are immediately around us, you know, the earth becomes a heaven. But only after the death of the individual, the good qualities come to our mind. When the person is alive, only the negative side of the person, only the parts of the person, we magnify, we exaggerate, we only want to see that. There may be so many good qualities with the individual. But all those good qualities we don't want to see, only the other side of it, the weak weaknesses of the individuals and parts of the individuals, we magnify and we look at them. And now she is telling that now you can rule the kingdom, all the other monkeys were weeping around. And now she is inconsolable, she was disconsolate. So many people try to console her, but she was weeping and bemoaning her sad plight in such a way. Now Hanuman actually wants to give some wise counsel to her. He says, Guna dosha krutam jantuhu sukarma palahe tukaha avyagrasadavapnoti sarvam pretya shubha shubham Actions performed under the force of karabdha will bring their results good and bad either in this birth or in the birth to come. Everybody has to reap the fruit of one's actions sooner or later. If not in this birth, then next birth. Guna dosha krutam jantuhu so karma palahe tukam. Abhyagrasta davapnoti sarvam pretya shubha ashubham. Both shubha or ashubham. Guna dosha krutam. We are here in this world as mortal, as human beings means every individual has both good karma and bad karma. Good actions will come, bad actions will come out of the individual for sure. Maybe percentage there is a difference. Somebody whom you call a very good individual, maybe only 10% of the bad karma comes out of him, 90% good karma comes out of him. Somebody whom you call actually a very wicked individual, maybe 90% actually bad karma, only 10% good karma. Percentage difference, but everybody is a mix only. Why actually we are asked to cultivate renunciation, why we are asked to cultivate dispassion, why we are asked to cultivate contentment? Because these qualities will help us actually to radiate more peace, to be non-violent with other human beings. Because you are simple, you are contented, you are not in competition with other individuals. So you will conduct yourself in a very gentle manner. Because of that, you will acquire more of punya, you will acquire more of merit and slowly you will come towards the truth. No, the opposite of it, you are highly greedy, you won't have money even at the expense of others. You won't feel actually whether you are hurting or not hurting others in the process. Sometimes, you know, we may be doing a lot of violence with others. You won't become aware of it because you are so possessed of our own desire of having more money or wealth that makes us hurt other individuals. You may not be mindful at that particular point of time, but whatever the pain that you inflicted upon others, the process of your acquiring wealth or things actually, that will come back upon you sooner or later, where our life is one. Nobody can escape from this law. That's why our rishis have discovered this law of Advaita, <coughs> non-duality, and then they have declared us, 
ahimsa paramo dharma so our life is designed in such a way every one of us have to do some violence some kind of violence without that there is no possibility our life cannot exist when we walk actually we stamp on actually step on you know ants and other things we kill them right so when you got a tree for our purpose actually there are so many creatures actually inhabiting the tree and all of them they die so the very way the life is constituted is such that actually some violence will happen so but what we need to do how we have to conduct ourselves we have to ensure we have to see that we do minimum violence to our own fellow species and also other beings and now actually hanuman is shocha shocha sikam shocham dinam dinanu kampase kasya ko vanu shochyosti dehesmin udbudopami shocha shocha sikam shocham you yourself are in a your state what's the grieving for dinam dinanu kampase you yourself are in a pitiable condition and you are showing pity on somebody else now she is bemoaning the death of wali that means what last time also i told if we are actually weeping over the death of somebody that means what we are saying that we are not going to die strong that is our fate also right we know all that but in you know because of association long association memory at that particular point of time we feel the pain but that is irrational logically we cannot explain it we are there after all you know creatures of emotion and the emotions play out and the grief comes out we weep it's okay but the thing is that's why hanuman is saying here dinam dinanu kampase tomorrow you are also going to die everybody will die one day then why are actually weeping over that dead body of wali you are in a pitiable condition or you are trying to show pity on others this is what actually you are doing basically by grieving like this hanuman is saying kasya ko va han shochosti dehesmin budbudopame everybody actually He is so fragile. It's like a water bubble. It's a bubble. Any time it will burst. So that bubble is burst today. Wali's body. That is a bubble. That bird <laughs> bubble is burst. Your bubble and my bubble will burst to- tomorrow at the most. Okay, that tomorrow is not very long. Actually, it's not a eons. It's not millions of years. So why are you weeping over this? No, now he says, you know, get up now. Actually, come forward to perform your duties. This is not the time to grieve so much. uh you have to perform the obsequies last rites of your husband and now you angada you install him actually on the throne actually sugriva will protect him wali actually has ascended to a higher sphere resolved for righteous people he had conducted himself in such a righteous manner he gave so much of delight to all his subjects so he had performed so many meritorious deeds he would go surely to the highest realm that is possible that is reserved for righteous people so you ought not be mourn the death of your beloved husband no actually take upon the reins of install angada as the king of kishkinda all these monkeys and all these bears are dependent on you so now come forward to act but wali said tara says no 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 i have no responsibility towards my son what is only the father's responsibility as father is not there it is the responsibility of his uncle sudriva's responsibility so my place is only by the side of my husband she has decided to fast unto death prayo pravesha i have to die along with my husband that is my dharma and nothing else you know in the past actually sati also used to be there and afterwards you know people used to do with forced people actually women actually to you know die along with the husband that became very ugly and barbaric but before that actually you know most of the puranic ages if you just see they actually gave up their bodies on their own their husband has gone means because i am a half but a half i am half of my husband actually and half of actually is killed means i am also gone this way they would give up their body along with husband's death when the husband dies of course that is an a very 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 high ideal but swami is saying here so you know the sage valmiki is saying socha socha se kam socham dinam dinanu kampase and she says actually atmeya masyeti shamam so she asked rama actually to kill her actually afterwards it comes not immediately but she asked rama saying that atmeya i am actually the atma I'm the soul of wali actually so we are inseparable So anyway, you have killed the half. Then just complete the formality and kill me also. So Hanuman actually tries to assuage her grief, but he didn't succeed, and she immediately she would not stop her wailing. And now actually, Wali is saying to Sugriva. So Wali calls Sugriva. You know, all his grief he was bearing actually. The arrow pierced into his heart. He was bleeding, and last breath, last thread of breath actually was there. That's all. and he called his brother his beloved brother sugriva and he says that forcibly i got forcibly carried away by perversity 
occasioned by an act of mine in the past. That means I have reaped the fruit of my own action. He has no bitterness towards Sugriva. Though Sugriva called the death of Bali through Rama, Bali actually is not actually resenting actually Sugriva's act. He says, yes, this is my karma, this is my fate. He has resigned to his fate. Hero, only heroes can do that. I am alone responsible for my karma. Swamiji says you are the creator of your own destiny. Good comes to you, you are responsible. Bad comes to you, you are responsible. Say that. Be a hero. When good comes, actually, I have done. When something bad comes, and God is responsible, stars are responsible, planets are responsible, parents are responsible, teachers are responsible, X and Y are responsible. <laughs> we don't want to own responsibility. Okay? But yes, Wali, because being a hero, he is not indicting. Though he is feeling that pain and sorrow and suffering, that he would have to leave the body very soon, but he did not indict to Sugriva. He says that happiness was not ordained for both of us at the same time. All these days I have enjoyed happiness, I have had my share, now it will be your turn. We both the brothers were not ordained to enjoy happiness at the same time. So I had my good days, I have had and now actually I am leaving, I am going to the abode of Yama and now it will be your turn. I am quitting my rulership, I am quitting my sovereignty, I am quitting my untarnished fame, my extensive fortune, everything actually I am quitting, I am leaving this world, I am going to the abode of Yama. Now actually Wali's worry is our Angada, his beloved son, who will take care of him. Going to the other world, going to the abode of Emma actually, is not giving him any pain. What is giving him his pain? Pain is because of his son. This Angada is still a boy, but not childish. He is a boy, but he is not childish. He will perform duties worthy of me. He is as valorous as I am, he is as capable as I am. He has got as much progress as I have got. For Sugriva, he will become your best asset. But you be his protector, you be his guardian hereafter, you be his donor, and you be his refugee. All these days I have taken care of him. Now it, you, you have to take care of my son. You know, generally fathers feel with children, but still there in his teenage, Angada was just a teenager at the time, and who take care of him, that was the pain for oh, no, what he was experiencing. So he is extracting that kind of promise from his brother Sugriva. Please take care of my son. And now actually he has turned towards Tara and he told Sugriva, you just see this lady Tara, she is very intelligent. In fact, he did not listen to her counsel. <laughs> but now actually he is telling Sugriva, you may hear, you may take advice from her, she is very intelligent. Wali understood that Tara was more intelligent than he himself was, but he didn't take actually her advice. Tara said actually when Sugriva came second time, challenging Wali for a fight in the dead of the night and she says to Wali, don't go now. Just now he has been defeated by you and again he comes in such a short time means what? He has actually the support of somebody else. I have heard from Angada that the great warriors Rama and Lakshmana, the great sons of Dasrata, were around, they were roaming here. Sugriva might have befriended them. It is not Sugriva's own strength. On his own strength he would not come in such a you know, short spell. Immediately he has come and actually challenging you means don't go. Tomorrow you can go for the fight. Wali did not listen to Tara. Tara tried her best to dissuade him from going for the duel, for the fight in the dead of the night. But Wali rebooks her, saying that, how dare this fellow Sugriva to challenge me again. So he comes out and goes for a battle and you know what happened and he got killed by Ramabana. Now he is saying that Tara is very intelligent, you may take her advice. She is very pious, she is very intelligent. And Nahi Tara Matam Kinchi Tanyata Parivartate, she is expert in deciphering the portents of things that are yet to come. So what is going to happen? She has developed that insight, she has developed that intuition, her word will come true. So now Wali is telling this to Sukriva and you may take her opinion, her advice if you need when you are in, you know, distress. But he may or may not talk, but he is just telling. Now he has turned to Angada again. You see, oh my son, all these days you have behaved the way you want. Because this after all, for every father, his dear son is very dear. But hereafter, you have to be mindful of how you have to conduct yourself. Don't displease Sugriva and just listen to whatever he says to him, you. Be amenable to Sugriva's control and be subordinate to the will of Sugriva. Don't oppose your angul hereafter. Do actions only that which will bring happiness to Sugriva. Don't make friendship with people who are inimical to Sugriva. And try to know when to act, what to act and how much to act. So please be conscious of the you know, time of your action also. 
this is the advice actually the father is giving actually to his son because he is living this world and how much generally fathers feel for children you know that we can understand from this wali absolutely no fear about going to the abode of ama only concern only fear is for angada because he is still teenager father less he will become hereafter and who will take care of my beloved son that is the only concern so he is trying to extract a promise from sudiva that he will take care of him well you just give me this uh, solace to me this uh, promise to me then i will depart from this world happily and joyfully so he is still in achati pranaya karya kartavyo pranayaschate ubayam hi maha dosham tasmad antara drukbhava so don't get inordinately attached to action and also don't become indifferent to action ubayo hi maha dosham both are actually defects if you just see the world today there are people who are very tamasic indifferent to anything they don't want to do their responsibility well they don't want to discharge their duties so much of suffering they give to their siblings and parents you just see so many of them in the society and also there are people who are so attached to action and you just the see in the world today you don't find any you know very few joyful faces you see because everybody takes life so seriously no ease in life there's a disease <laughs> right ease comes only when you know the art of life the art of life is you know everything happens by the will of the divine we have to get involved totally we have to do our duties and responsibilities but not with attachment the kind of attachment that we have as if that is ultimate objective life we all actually leave the world one day so any action however great the action may be you know how come that you get attached to those actions so intensely because when our life itself is like a bubble as anuman says budbu dokame whatever may be the achievement of this world whatever may be the achievement of this body and the mind those achievements are so short lived because this itself is short lived then why to take everything so seriously and if you say the is the danger is people will take it in reverse way then what to do make merry every day no 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 the god actually has created this world it's a kind of riddle okay it's like it's, it's a guardian knot you have to untie the knot so for that actually highest discipline is required or detachment is required discipline is required tapas is required austerity is required you practice that and come out of the samsara so god actually is putting us through a test actually if you say this don't get attached to thing and people actually don't let me make merry every day no no that's not the idea the idea is that be wise be wise i know how to how to conduct this life how do i act in between death and birth birth and death so how you will do that you don't get attached to things that intensely at the same time you do your responsibilities well you are totally involved but not entangled so now this counseling of wali is over now he has breathed through the last unable to bear the pain of the shaft now all the monkeys burst into deep sob they were reminiscing actually about great deeds that wali had performed what kind of protection he had extended to them you know because how much they were protected under his rulership the forest actually yielded plenty of fruit after all monkeys were they need fruit right so because of fear of bali actually the forest would yield so much of fruit and uh, you know uh, flower and everything so much boughs the monkeys would jump from uh, you no know, one tree to another tree and they had their you know heyday you know feel they enjoyed the rulership of bali and our also reminiscing actually great acts he had performed once actually there was a gandharva gandharva by name goloba he came and attacked kishkinda and the fight went for 16 years but wali didn't give up he could kill the gandharva in the 16th year and that's how he protected these other monkeys from the gandharva so the monkeys actually extolling wali and actually reminiscing about his heroic deeds so but still you know tara actually couldn't bear the sight of you know wali's death because wali breathed the last she embraced wali like a creeper clinging to a huge uprooted tree you know wali actually fell like an uprooted tree and uh, now she again be mourning her fate and saying that actually i advised you not to go for the jewel but you didn't let, uh listen to me and mm, brought yourself to this plight and you have made kishkinda an orphan now what will be my fate these people are wailing actually what answer you give to them why don't you listen to our wails actually she is telling you know it all will happen fate in the form of rama has become subservient to the will of sugriva death has to come in some way so 
fate has become subservient to the will of sugriva in the form of rama this is her statement sugrivasya vasham prapto vidiresha bhavatya ho today vidhi the destiny was in the control of sugriva it's not that actually destiny would be in the control of the individuals but today destiny acted through sugriva destiny came in the form of rama now she is telling actually you made sure your enemy sleep on you know so many battles he had fought and i was in, invincible wali was invincible in every battle now you yourself are lying on this you know bare floor you have made me many of enemies actually to fall like this in the combat but now you yourself have fallen shurayana pradatavya kanya kal vipaschita and now she is saying you see my fate all these days i have the pride that i have actually i am the wife of a hero now my hero is lying you know pool of blood my hero is gone so my pride got shattered all these days i was really proud that actually i am the wife of a hero but now actually i have fallen into an ocean the bottomless ocean of grief you just see my fate my condition so nobody who ever is wise should give a girl in marriage to a hero because heroes how many days they will live we don't know because heroes will fight battles and they will die in the battle one day so if you take pride you know in your being a like, companion of a hero and hero will die and your fight will get shattered and i am the example so when she says that now i want to embrace you but i am not able to embrace because of the shaft you are still the arrow that is still there actually pierced into the heart of wali now neela comes and he pulls out the arrow because she is shouting actually i want to embrace you oh my lord actually but i am not, not able to do it because of the shaft neela pulls out the shaft but that shaft ramabhana is still actually radiating so much of you know putra sudharanam banasya api dadu dyutihi so much of splendor you know the but after all even that so it has touched the, the victim and killed wali but when neela pulled it out and it was like a streak of lightning the ramabhana and now actually he is telling angada clasp the feet of his father tara to wali bless him bless him he used to say that long live my child long live my child so many times you have blessed your child now also you bless him but where is the question of blessing now wali is no more actually he has departed from this world now having satisfied gods through the sacrifice of a jewel how come actually you have left me alone you know in a sacrifice a husband and wife both should sit now you want to offer ablutions in the form of your blood to gods because the ramabhana when it pierced him actually blood came out actually so the jewel was the sacrifice your blood actually is ablution okay that you are offering to gods <coughs> but when you perform this ablution actually any sacrifice you should have actually wife by your side but deserting me without inform me you yourself sat for the sacrifice you know this is all you know emotions come out and play out <coughs> this is how actually she was weeping and though actually you have lost everything but the splendor of the rajya sri the kingly glory is still actually is not leaving you though wali actually has become dead and uh, life breath left his body but the splendor of his face she was talking and looking at that that rajya sri has not left you of course he was a great hero a mighty hero rama also respected him seeing the pitiful uh, condition of uh, tara seeing her sobs she will stop and again weep into weep it will stop and again actually if you give some pause again and again she is doing like that piteously and seeing this sugriva feels very sad and uh, looks at all the spectacle and looks at the people around i am responsible for all this so many people are suffering now all because of me and now actually he seeks the presence of rama he comes to rama and says though my objective has been accomplished o rama you have kept your promise and it is i who conspired against my brother so i feel very sad about it and uh, I, i i this actually gives me a lot of pain and i don't relish this sovereignty anymore i don't have taste for luxuries anymore well, why you want to become a king because you can enjoy the ultimate luxury but now my taste for luxury has gone i don't want the rulership of this kishkinda actually so i shall bitterly repent my action see wali is so noble actually many times wali had the occasion to kill sugriva but he didn't kill natva jigam sami chareti though he had the opportunity to kill his brother sugriva he just banished him exiled him but he didn't kill him he would catch him and afterwards he say no i don't want to kill you go away chareti go away from here that's all but where is i am what i did we just see so many days so many times he caught me but he never actually killed me so he kept up the nobility he kept up the brotherliness he kept up his righteousness but whereas i i erred on the wrong side i actually have given so 
I can know a frivolity I have given to fear I have given to wrath I have given to lust actually I could not have done this to my brother maybe whatever the mistake a little mistake actually he had a little more lust and so he kept my wife so I could have forgiven him but instead of doing that I bore a grudge against him and I was looking for somebody who would help me and ultimately I got you Rama and now got him killed got him eliminated from this world so I have done an object sin I have done an act of uh, you know uh, <coughs> a great demerit and this demerit actually will consume all my virtue and all my merits i'm sure of that so i don't want to become the prince regent i don't want to become the king of this kishkinda okay this angada will not be able to survive this grief actually angada also was weeping over the dead body of wali and this boy will not be able to withstand the grief that actually this separation from wali has cost him and he will surely die if angada dies actually his mother wali sara also will die so what for all this kingdom and what for this sovereignty so o oh lord actually please permit me to enter into the fire i have given a pledge to you that i will help you in finding sita your spouse that my monkeys will do my bears will do they will be at your beck and call i will leave them at your beck and call they will be in your service they will find your spouse your work will be accomplished for sure you don't have to grieve on that so okay whatever the promise that i have given to you i will keep that but please permit me to enter into the fire to atone for my sinful act of killing my brother so griva says this to rama and seeks rama's permission to kill himself but rama doesn't give that permission rama also shed tears at that point of time because tara was weeping angada was weeping mangis were weeping now actually sugriva started weeping he also uh, thinks actually that he has done an unpardonable act he has committed an unpardonable sin ityeva martasya ragu pravira shrutvo vacho vali jaganya jasya संजात भाष्प पर वीर हंता राम मुहूर्ते विमना बभूवा राम मुहूर्ते विमना बभूवा राम एक्चुअली फॉर अ शॉर्ट पीरियड ऑफ टाइम ही डिड नॉट नो वॉट टू रिप्लाई ही ऑल्सो शेड फ्यू टीयर्स ऑफ पेन एंड देन ए किप्ट काम फॉर सम टाइम वेन सुग्रीव आस्ट फॉर परमिशन टू किल हिमसेल्फ and now wali's ministers try to help tara because she clasped the body of wali and she was not leaving the dead body because final rites are to be performed okay it's getting late actually body will you know get decomposed and uh, the drama actually going on for long and uh, so nobody wants would be able to do that actually wali's ministers try to separate her from dead body but she wanted to escape from them and wanted to hug the body again and then she looked at the drama when she in that grief also she knew who rama was and extols rama and he says tvam aprameyascha durasadascha dicendriyascha uttama dharma kascha you are actually aprameya you are immeasurable difficult to face durasadascha jitendriyascha you are the controller of the senses you are uttama dharma kascha an embodiment of all the great virtues of rama akshina kirtischa you are und- you are of undecaying fame These are all the adjectives she uses and praises Rama. And now she says, actually, you are done, okay, I killed my husband. Now you just kill me. I don't relish life without my husband. Life has no meaning for me without him, actually. What she asks, actually. E naiva baane na hata priyo me Te naiva maam tum jahi saaya ke na Hata gamishya mi samipa masya Na maam rute rama rame tawali with which arrow you have killed my husband with the same arrow you kill me tenaiva vanam tum jahi saayake na okay hatha gamishyami samipamasya namam rute rama rameta wali without me wali won't be happy in heaven also i know for sure that wali has gone to heaven but there also will not be happy without me i have to be by his side if he has to live happily so you kill me also with the arrow that you have used to kill my husband wali so this is because maha pratirvata she is asking this from rama i know that you are hesitating you will hesitate to kill me because you think actually stree vada dosha you know when the pancha mahapataka so what are the five great sins one of the five great sins is this killing a woman a man should not kill a woman for any reason it's not justifiable so you may be thinking like that you may think like that you may desist from the action but i say yachapi manyeta bhavan mahatma strigata dosho na bhavetu mahyam you may be thinking that strigata dosha that killing a woman that sin will come upon you but it will not come upon you why 
ఆత్మీయమస్యేతి చ మాం జహిత్వం బికాజ్ ఐఎమ్ పార్ట్ ఆఫ్ హిమ్ యూ హ్యావ్ కిల్డ్ వాల్ ఇట్స్ యాజ్ గుడ్ హ్యావ్ కిల్డ్ మీ ఆల్సో ఇట్స్ ఓకే జస్ట్ కంప్లీట్ ద ఫార్మాలిటీ న స్త్రీ వదస్యాత్ మనుజేంద్ర పుత్ర ద సిన్ ఆఫ్ కిల్లింగ్ ఎ ఉమన్ విల్ నాట్ కమ్ టు యూ ఓ మనుజేంద్ర పుత్ర ఓ ప్రిన్స్ ఆఫ్ యాక్చువల్లీ దశరథ శాస్త్ర ప్రయోగాత్ వివిధాశ్చ వేదాత్ ఆత్మాహి అనన్య పురుషస్య దారా ఆత్మాహి అనన్య పురుషస్య దారా స్క్రిప్చర్స్ సే దట్ హు ఈజ్ ఉమన్ వట్ ఈజ్ ఉమన్ ఆత్మాహి అనన్య పురుషస్య హస్బెండ్స్ యాక్చువల్లీ హాఫ్ ఆత్మ షీ ఈస్ ద వెరీ సోల్ ఆఫ్ మై హస్బెండ్ ఐఎమ్ ద వెరీ సోల్ ఆఫ్ మై హస్బెండ్ వాట్ వాల్యూ ఐ హ్యావ్ ఫర్ దిస్ లైఫ్ వాట్ యాక్చువల్ ఐ విల్ నాట్ చెరీష్ ఇట్ యాక్చువల్లీ ఇట్స్ యాజ్ గుడ్ యాజ్ యూ హెల్ మీ జస్ట్ టు టేక్ కంప్లీట్ ద ఫార్మాలిటీ and don't give me the trouble of actually bearing this life i can't bear it anymore so she is requesting don't leave me like in this condition i am forlorn i am almost dead i am a jeevatswa now so don't leave me in this condition please execute please request, actually oblige my request she is telling so you for one know how we actually young man you know you yourself have lost your wife she has been abducted you feel the pain of her abduction of sita now actually my husband has gone you must understand my pain so then a point you know in living this world in a, you know in leading a life without my husband so now rama actually is consoling her you know ma veera bhaye vimatim kurushva loko hi sarvo vihito vidhatra you are actually the wife of a veera man of exceptional valor you should not weep like this vimatim kurushva loko hi don't actually take this line of thought this is not it is not the right way of thinking you must live for the sake of angada angada will bring you the joy and sugriva will take care of you well and you will have good days and happy days trayopi loka vihitam vidhanam na atikramante vashagahi tasya this is how actual vidhata brahma the creator has ordained the world the world is a mixture of good and bad the world is a mixture of pain and pain pain and pleasure both will come to being sexually according to their karma this is how actually the vidhata decreed and nobody can transcend that law all the three worlds they are not oversteps the bounds that have been fixed by the creator himself so you and i everybody else has to follow that law we don't have a choice here datra vidhanam vihitam tataiva na shura patnya paridevayanti so the wives of hero sexually will not actually weep having known this law so get consoled now actually after rama saying of these words Tara kept quiet. She controlled herself. She controlled her emotion. Now Rama asks Griva, you bring fagots, uh, you king firewood, you bring firewood to burn the body of Vali and uh, Lakshmana asks Tara to bring the palanquin and palanquin was brought and then the dead body of Vali was carried to the bank of the river and there it was cremated. Uh, the vanaras actually had done the cremation rama was not there by the side of dasharatha but here actually he arranged the obsequies of vali he also arranged the obsequies of jatayu jatayu practically died in his lap so it's not an ordinary blessing for an individual to have the lord by the side of him when you breathe his last vali in that way is exceptionally fortunate only vali knew that and rama knew that probably tara also knew that so that's why she didn't indict rama she is one of the great pratibrata five maha pratibrata stara also mandodari mother sita dropadi and ahalya just uttering their names itself will have a purificatory effect i tell you in this kali yuga these names actually nam nama namni so they go together so it goes with certain quality when you utter that name the qualities that individual had embodied you would be reminded of that so such a remembrance actually again and again when you remember these characters those qualities would manifest through us also that is how actually we need to worship them so very mention of the word tara will have that purificatory effect on the individuals she is one of the greatest women that the soil has produced a really great pratibratha and she gets consoled now after rama's intervention and then the story continues story of ramayana so of course exceptional life exceptional character the way you know great sage valmiki molded her and all these emotions we also see but at the same time to control to have that control over the grief and not to indict sugriva not to indict rama and and to control herself like that is exception of her and because of her 
purity only wali actually became invincible no other asura could ever come near wali wali you know even humble ravana also ravana was no match for wali for that matter nobody on earth was match for that's why wali says if you really wanted you find the trace the your wife actually you could have sought my help instead of grievous help why did you kill me like this by standing actually behind a tree i could have helped you i could have found her anywhere in the world three worlds whichever actually demon has kept her i would have brought i would have killed the demon and brought the individual sita for you you could have taken my help actually you are so capable and you are so powerful in fact but now actually nobody else would be able to kill wali only rama could kill rama killed for a purpose actually he had transcended dharma whoever who ever sits on the throne of a king actually as yes. on the throne must set himself or herself as an example for the people to follow and emulate because that was treta yuga because it was actually bharata who was the ruler of the kingdom the entire earth and rama told in the beginning itself just we are just on the move to see that actually everybody behaves according to dharma so kali yuga so many things happened but in treta yuga that was too much of an offense okay that's why rama had eliminated wali of course it's a kind of blessing only he had pronounced upon him because wali was looking at the face of rama and then breathed the last he had attained to the highest sphere so two more classes for ramayana then rama actually was there in the forest for 14 years you know so 14 classes on ramayana afterwards we'll see what will happen hmm? let's meditate for two days two minutes before we disperse
Ooh.